Um, well, there's always silver lining to every cloud. Exactly, right? Uh, that's how I look at things, you know? Keep breaking down over and over again. Literally, fuck, two weeks in a row now. I've had to get a towed home. Uh, oh, oh, that's not a good sign. Not a good sign. It's a 1999 TJ. It's dealt with the Canadian winters, so she's old and beat up. Uh, ah, Canadian winters. Those can definitely be rough. I grew up in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Florida, so. so you get the idea. You know what a shitty-ass fucking winter feels like. Um, it's yeah, it's a coming. It. Nope, it's a coming already. Uh, cold as fuck. Yeah, hence the big fucking sweater right now. Well, if it makes you feel any better, everybody in Florida, we woke up today, we decided it was hoodie weather. <laughs> because it was about 60. <laughs> nice. Way too early for it, but eh, it is what it is. Yep. Um, all right, well, it is 5.30, so I guess we can get started as the room fills up a little bit here. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to dive into a bunch of stuff about you, because I've been seeing you around. Um kind of have an idea what you do, but not really. Um, I, I kind of have an idea what I do, but not really as well. <laughs> Love it. Um, I know you've been involved in a more recent project, uh, which I minted a couple today. Uh, we got a Clockworky Titbits Nipple Labs collab that yes. you are a yes, part of. Do. Uh, what is, do you want to post a link for that? Oh, actually I have it. Zipatech? Is that what it's called? Uh, Zipatotech. Uh, yeah, so this is, fuck, a bit of a big deal in my eyes because, uh, there's, there, well, there's a lot to this. One, this is the first generative project done by Clockworky. Uh, which yeah, yeah let's let's put it let's stop right there yeah imagine the pressure of getting it right when yeah it's the first time yeah. yeah so this is Not only that, but well, I mean you know my competitor right and that would be the guys that develop portal lens right and what did they do with paint spot well they convince paint swap to add rarity right yep and and this ties directly into clockwork i was working with another project they wanted to add rarity to their project it was a smaller mint uh phantom sneakers if you remember them yep so i sat back talked to the lead on that he gave me all the attributes added all the attributes added all the rarity and then published it so on a mint of 123 wasn't bad mm -hmm. uh, since then I've added rarity to 5k's and 10k's and I believe I asked you to ask me a question yeah how long does that take yeah yeah I'm super intrigued to, to, to hear this for me typing out on the keyboard 2 to 3 minutes wow 10,000 done just like that wow that's not what I expected to hear. No, but here we go. You got to think like a developer, right? Instead of thinking like an artist that brings out the art, you got to think of the logos, right? What is the logical steps in order to calculate something fast? You know, there's a bunch of keys. There's a bunch of values. How do I make it work so it works fast? I figured out a couple of simple ways of doing it. Um, first time I run the entire project, I grab all the keys. Second time I fill up all the values. Third time I'm running the calculation of rarity. And then I'm modifying all the JSON. And if you don't know what a JSON is, it's basically the name, description, uh, a link to the picture, and a list of attributes. And what I'm doing with rarity is I'm actually modifying the attributes. So is the rarity is essentially determined, the percentage is determined in, so this is where it gets weird because some projects I know, maybe not a phantom yet, but there's the idea of like generating 
directly on chain. Um, right, and you can do that. And let's talk about random, right? I love this. This is a good. This is a great topic, right? Applying random on chain, right? Usually, one hundred percent a bad idea. Like, let's say you're designing a poker game, right, or a betting game, or something like that. If you're designing something with a pseudo random number, which means you're generating the random number on chain, the code's open source, so you should know how to calculate it. So, if you want to game the system, you figure out how they calculate their pseudo random number and go one or two blocks ahead and pick the right number. Right. Oh, there was a but project. There's also Chainlink. Um, Chainlink is an oracle. They ensure a little bit more randomness, but even when it comes down to programming, like say if I'm using my laptop and I'm using Go language, or if I'm using Python, or even if I'm using JavaScript that you see on web pages, if I'm generating a random number there, it's not truly random either because it's based off clock time. Right. Uh -oh. oh, this is fucking okay. Sorry, man. I, I, I every once in a while I got those mind blowing yeah. answers of yeah. Random isn't really random. It, you can calculate it to a certain extent. Okay, so you mentioned this whole chain link oracle thing. Now, oh, good. I know I'm in a project on OpenSea, uh, Luchadors, which. It says something about Chainlink VRF uh, generated. Yes. What exactly does that mean? That means that you use the Oracle to ensure randomness by importing the Oracle contracts. So that way you pay a little bit of Chainlink, you pay a little bit of the native token. Uh, in that case, Ethereum. You know, for Phantom, it would be Phantom. And you kind of ensure a little bit more randomness than what would be on chain. Right. Okay. So then... So it's a little bit harder to game the system because you're using an outside source instead of a source you can actually duplicate. Okay. So this clockworky project that you just did, um, yeah. it, it's not... Is it is it randomly generated on chain or, or not? No, I no. randomly generated the images using JavaScript. Right. I then made all 2,500 of them. I then randomized the random generation itself so it has two layers of random and then put it onto a mint. So then when you're getting basically, I guess when I'm looking at my paint swap and I see it's got 11 attributes. One attribute is 21%. Uh, one is 0.71%. Um, is that predetermined before the mint? Yes, yeah, that is predetermined off of a full mint of 2,500. Okay. Let's say if we edit that or we stop the mint, let's say we stop it at a random number like 2135, right? I have the capability as the only dev function to resubmit the same pictures but modify the percentages so it's the accurate percentage if we decide to close it out early or something like that. Okay. Right. Oh, so that that's if you're closing the mentor early, you can rearrange right. percentages. Now is that a lot? Is that a lot of like labor intensive work, or is that just the? the... No, it's about five seconds worth of work. Yeah, just changing over. Fair enough. Again. Fair enough. Um... Sorry, man. I make this stuff sound really super easy. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it. Man. Yeah, yeah. You guys talk about how you generate the art, right, and how you make the stuff. I'm just like you. I'm sitting down. I'm writing down notes. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to ask because I'm not an artist. Right. I think the only time I can call myself an artist is when I'm making a web template, injecting Web3 into it so you can actually interact with my contract. I think that's the only art that I get into. Right. And even then, I'm not generating images. 
I'm taking the images that I got, blending them, moving them, positioning them, animating them, you know, whatever it is. Well, so let's go back to the beginning of, of say, this clockworky collaboration. Like, what are your conversations? I, I, I mean, I, I know he's such an incredible per- human being. Um, but, like, what are your conversations with him? Because, he, you know, he does one-of-one one art. So I know, like, I've had the conversation with, uh, you know, our one-of-one one artists that are looking at making generative projects. Uh, Chaskai, for instance, is just like, dude, I don't even know where to start. Like, I don't, I don't understand how to do this art style. Um, well, actually, this is a great thing because Golden actually goes, hey, Blackbird, he wants to do this. I have all the stuff. Run it. I go, what do you mean run it? He goes, here's all the attributes. Here's all the stuff. Make a dev call. Make it look sexy. Go. And, dude, just imagine the, oh, oh, no. Because I didn't really have that much clockwork interaction. On yeah. this. It was basically, I had the pieces, and I executed them. So and the, probably the main reason of that was because of Phantom DC conference last week. Right. You were there? I was not live. I was virtual, but that means I was up at, what was it, like 9, 10 p.m. my time, eating breakfast, and then going to bed around 3 in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All kinds of fucked up. <laughs> but, you know, something nice came out of that. And that would be that Ferrari engine ERC-721 contract that I created. Care to explain? Well, let's put it this way. Gas costs for a typical NFT mint. What are they usually? About 180K, 210K. I've seen some 300Ks. <clears throat> that sounds about right, right? Yep. <clears throat> let's go over the first 12 mints and clock workings, right? First one I had was 81K. Then I had 139K for a double mint, 81K for a single, 112K for a double mint, 106K for a double mint, which actually kind of set my record. Uh, mint number 9 and 10 was 112K. The 11th mint was 65K, so that's my record for a solo mint. And the 12th mint was 81K. So yeah, you're talking about that, that's, that's that solo mint point. being half of typical mint price. No, 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 that's unheard of. We're talking, that's a hundred thousand gas less than Oh, ever. right, right, I take right. this thing to Ethereum, I'm going against layer twos because they offer minting off-chain for about 82,000. And I can do it on-chain for 81,000. That's how nuts it is. So, I mean, let's put it this way. Like I was saying with the portal hints, they mm. started the space race with rarity, right? Okay, they got Sputnik, they got Latvia, they got the dog in there. Finally, this ape got into space, man. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, you're going to actually see a lot of competitors either step up to this challenge of what are you going to be known for? Are you going to be known for having the most effective minner, the most efficient minner? Because... You look at Phantom. It's currently at what price? Like 2.7, 2.8? Yep. Well, imagine Phantom at 1000 What would you rather pay? 81K in gas or 180 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, seriously. You know, I'm already looking forward into layer two for NFT minting for Phantom now. And the reason why is what the fuck? if we don't have that infrastructure... What's that going to do to our marketplace? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I'm okay, so what the f- five years ahead right now, trying to figure out what does EVM need? Oh, this is where we could go so many directions. Like, I want to ask. Um, so I well, yeah, I guess I'd like to get your opinion on on this whole EVM thing, because so you have all these. All these chains that market themselves as EVM compatible, um, but then I guess something like Solana isn't, 
it's a whole different well, Solana is actually rust based um it's not evm based okay um another one that's not evm based that you're probably used to is cardano right um that's also a very unique language I kind of believe more in Ada slash Cardano than I do Solana. Mm. That's a good insight to know. Reason. And if you really want me to spill the beans about Candy Machine Mint, oh, God, that thing is horrible. Especially on the programming side of the house. Dude, I don't know what you're talking about. What is a Candy Machine Mint? Okay, um, well, good example. If you look at art. Yep. That would be an EVM based candy machine mint for Solana. Now I can write a contract and submit it to the chain. You can see the contract. You know the ins and outs of the contract. When I'm doing something in Solana, I'm writing a program. Is it more of a D app? Yeah, but still getting the code right, getting everything correct. And let's not even talk about the launching costs. Mm. Um, mm. Typical 10K mint is going to run you about 45 to 50 Solana. Really? Yeah, it's kind of nuts. They store their data a little bit differently. Um, actually, you know what? Since we're talking about it, let me grab the book. Literally, I got uh, programming books. At the ready, because I knew you were going to ask me these questions. But um, Candy Machine Mint runs off of Metaplex, right? Metaplex has a very unique way of storing on-chain data for the NFTs. Um, their metadata, JSONs, you know, which gives you your name and all that stuff. They also include the artwork group. Um, they also include royalties i can't remember right off the top of my head what else they can include but it's a very more robust type of data and doing so it costs a little bit more to put it on the chain and also it wouldn't be paid in solana so you got to exchange solana for that token and then submit it on chain right so then when you know i, I i've been hearing stuff about like you know, Phantom is is EVM compatible now, but there's there's talk about the the Phantom virtual machine. Ooh, Do you have now this? Yeah, this I can definitely drink a beer to. Okay, I'm gonna tell you this one. The difference between Binance, where I learned coding, to Phantom, is the difference between a Yugo and a McLaren. Really? Yeah. So this gets interesting when you think about what just got announced last week about them trying to build a sex on on Phantom. Um, I don't know if you got heard about what was announced. The two one million dollar bounties mm -hmm. was the interfaces for that. Right. So um Do you do any day trading? Stocks, bonds, any of that stuff? Uh, not really, no. I did the token trading a little bit when I first got into okay. this space, but that ended pretty quickly when I found <laughs> NFTs. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know how it goes, man. You start <laughs> off in the year C20s, and you end up at 721s, and you just kind of say, that's it. Um, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I started off programming ERC20s. Uh, I started, and then I learned about 721s. I have not programmed an ERC20 token in about six seven months it's all been straight nfts but um i'm trying to bloomberg terminal that's that's the one i was looking for. yep one of the projects of the bloomberg terminal the other one was how to interface with the central exchange and the really interesting project because it is powered by binance but recently what has come to light with binance.us issues man and being U.S. based, I kind of like Binance.us mm -hmm. because like, it's easy to get money on, easy to get money off. If Phantom caters to everybody, I will not use Binance.us. I will use Phantom.us or right. whatever the site's going to be. Right. Um, 
not that I'm a fanboy, but literally it took one project to hook me over here. Right. Yeah. So when it comes to, I guess, like, okay, so part, I want to get back into the, the ERC 7. What is this ERC 1155? Good question. Glad you asked. Have you ever heard of the game Fortnite? Yes. That started off as an NFT game, right? Um, you've probably heard of Crypto Kitties, correct? Yep. Okay, so you know, you got the cat, and then you can add on stuff to the cat, like a bowl. Um, the bowl would be unique, but it's not completely unique because you can buy multiple bowls, right? Right. The kibble that goes into it, that's common, right? But a blue bowl does not equal a green bowl, but the kibble equals kibble. Right. Mm-hmm. So in the ERC eleven fifty five, you can change the level of, I guess, fungibility. So you can have a fungible token, a semi fungible token, and a non fungible token, all in the same contract. Yeah. So, I, I just saw your eyes pop out in the wow factor. Yeah. So yes. so that's the next step, right? I guess that, is that the next step? Like everything is going to end up being. ERC eleven fifty five. I would say triple sevens and probably eleven fifty fives for the future, and they're probably going to rewrite seven twenty one, so it's a little bit more effective. Right. Um, triple sevens are just an ERC twenty on steroids. It has the safe transfer from, so it doesn't get stuck on contracts. Okay. So let's. Okay. So I've got. ERC standards covered a little bit. Um, you didn't ask the good one. Twenty nine eighty one ERC royalties. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Did you know it's not an ERC? It's an EIP, which for everybody else it, it doesn't matter, right? But when you sit back and you code, there's no official ERC standard, right? So that means you can write your own every single time. Um, if you look here, and I'm typing it into chat, you will see github.com slash You'll see my edition of that, right? Um, if you click through that, I mean, I'll kind of walk you through this a little bit. Yes. Yeah. all right. Go, oh my God, there's a bunch of files. Yep. If you look at contracts. Okay. And you look at ERC twenty nine eighty one not sold and ERC twenty nine eighty one collection not sold. Those are the two that I use. Um, one of them is for a multi mint collection, which would be those ten k mints that you see. Um, ERC twenty nine eighty one not sold is more for a site like um, the future Nipex V two site. They're getting that. And it's real simple. It's not much, but that's what we call an add-on contract. Mm-hmm. It's something that you call into your main contract that has all the mappings and all the functions you ever need. Okay. This is fucking French to me. Exactly. Uh... <laughs> How many developers will literally type that into your chat and say, here's my answers to it? Right. Right. Okay, so how, how do, I guess so you can take you basically take your contract that you create and then you use this for multiple different projects. Is that that's the yes. idea? Um, all I do is I modify it, right? Right. Um, I have a modular standard, and that's probably the reason why my gas fees are so low. Is because I did everything modular instead of wasting extra energy of having. Um, I, the new fad is roles, right? You have an admin role, you have a developer role, you have a minting role. I cut all that out. You really only need two people. If you want to add roles, you, you deploy a role contract and you send, you know, only owner to that role contract. So that way it's off that contract. So that way your contract is completely lean. 
the whole idea is have a nice, lean contract, not much in the constructor except for mapping of memory, which in this case, you can see it. I use ERC-165. I'm not even using the diamond technique. Mm -hmm. I've already deployed contracts and just calling them up. That's that's the next step. But, um, yeah, I mean, these contracts, all it is is programs. Um, you hear smart contracts, think um, remote control. Right. You got a bunch of buttons on there, and all the buttons do a different thing. So when I, we hear the term open source all the time. Now, d when you deploy a contract, is that contract editable once deployed? What I'm, yes, no. what I'm insinuating at is, do you have the power to like fuck us all if you ever wanted to? <laughs> yeah. <but I> would, <laughs> okay, good to know. I just pronounced develop. Yeah, and you wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, good case and example. Remember degenerates, right? Remember they had the issue on the first mint. I sat back, I reminted everything. Then, once you know all the dust settled, everybody did what had to be done. Mm -hmm. I had to modify, I think, four JSON hunts or five. Yeah, it was five. To, I, I just added a space in there, so it was all the same wording. Then after that, uploaded the new JSONs for those five. Renounced developer. Um, 8-Bit Nostalgia. Renounced developer. Um, that, that's just a standard. When everything's set, everything's concrete, we don't have to worry about it anymore. Renounced developer. Then you never have to worry about it. So when you say renounced developer, that, that it just means that... What, what do you mean by that? Okay. Um, I have two roles basically in my contract mm -hmm. i have the owner of the contract which i always give to the project leader mm -hmm. and then i have only developer right mm -hmm. so i got only owner functions and i got only developer functions. the developer functions are more in depth because most of the owners they just want to set the price they want to set the royalties um they may want to you know change minor things not the major stuff Whereas the developer, let's say there's an error with the JSONs, right? And JSON 35, 36, and 37 are jacked up, right? So in order to fix them, I have to modify that, reload it to IPFS, which changes the hash of the directory. I upload the new directory file into the contract. Everything's good. Because unless you had 34, 35, and 36, or whatever the errors were, you wouldn't see a thing. Right. On your NFT. Um, that's one thing I've always paramounted and championed. I never want to wreck a project. You want to know why? I like having repeat customers. Mm -hmm. I also like mm -hmm. advancing the space, mm -hmm. not being a rug puller. Yeah. Um, I think my reputation recently can tell you that. Yep. Yeah. Um, heck, if you were at Phantom DC, you actually know my real name. Right. I was completely doxed in Phantom DC. So, that should tell you something. I'm not scared of telling you who I am, what I do, any of that stuff, because why, why be scared of it? Mm. What, what you're good at now may not be the standard in two years. So always try to, I guess, develop and get better. Right. Yeah, so... Uh two aspects here. I want to get into image storage. Um, Good. Yeah. Because... There, there's, two, there's two aspects I'd love to talk about with image storage. Yes, please. Or what's your follow-on question? Uh, the the other one was, I guess, basically... Yeah, so, I mean, it, there's the concept to me that, like, I, I came into the space as a, as a Bitcoin maxi. Um my understanding of, of how the world is going to operate is that we're we're going to move, we're going to try to print our own money. So we're going to move into DeFi. Um, so I'm going to ride this this wave. But there's an aspect to me that like, uh, because I don't have the, the tech knack background and knowledge, like a lot of this shit scares the hell out of me uh, in like long term. You want to know, know a scary secret? 
when I first started. Yes. I would be scared shitless to type in truffle deploy. Or I'm sorry, truffle migrate dash dash network BNB or whatever network I, I was deploying to. I would literally delete everything in my Linux machine, relook at the contract, type it all out again, about to hit enter, delete it all, go look at the contract. I mean, when I first started out, I would sweat bullets. Mm. Nowadays, I know what I'm writing beyond a shadow of a doubt. Um, I knew what I was writing then, but it was, you always have those questions of, well, what ifs, right? Nowadays, I know what I'm writing. I know what I'm deploying. I got friends that I just send these contracts to. They audit them. I get green lights. Um, this contract series that I showed them, um, three of them said, holy crap, how did you ever get it this low? And I, I go, I kind of stumbled on the answer last week. <laughs> and they go, dude, you need to have more time off. Um, <laughs> it was nice having last week off. Even yeah. though I really hadn't had last week off. Um, <laughs> but it, it was a really good thing to learn. And another thing to learn is interplanetary file system. I, I always say IPFS. When you talk about interplanetary file system, there's two ways to go. Um, especially if you're an end user. One is you download something and it's on your laptop or your computer. And when you're on, the files are connected. Hmm. When you shut down the computer or you close the clamshell on your laptop, that's it. Your connection to IPFS is over. For a developer, I have a server. I have, it may be overkill, but I have two terabytes of space for IPFS. So what does that mean? I can host large files. I can host movies and won't even blink an eye. Mm-hmm doesn't matter to me um for smaller and I, I guess the intermediate between i'm using my personal laptop and i have a server would be i guess pinata.cloud's a good one i know there's a few others but i'm i'm a fan of pinata.cloud i kind of i have an account there i do secondary pinning of all my metadata so that way my metadata populates extremely fast I mean images are always going to be images it's going to take a while but if you can populate the metadata rapidly usually everybody's happy about that <coughs> so I guess but yeah there's, there's two files when it comes down to an NFT right mm -hmm. you have your picture um, you can have your music you can have your movie you can have your literature you can have your PDF um you can have a program, right? I I do IPFS pinning of my contracts. So you can actually see my contracts indefinitely. Right. Um, so you can pin anything. Turning that into an NFT takes another file, and that's what that uh, JSON is. It's actually JavaScript object notation. So all it is is a bunch of keys and values and some curly braces that's it so I'm, I'm just hypothetically just I, you know tinfoil realist i'm just trying to think worst case scenario um yeah so there's well okay worst case scenario great i got one um were you alive for napster yep okay i had a nap server that got nailed by the doj hmm hey when you're number six man you're number six <laughs> <laughs> but I got shut down, right? What's the difference between Napster and IPFS? I, I, that could be a great question. Right. And my answer to that is, well, on Napster, you were able to see files. You knew what you were trading, right? On IPFS, you see a hash. And these hashes will either start with this. You'll see a QM and a bunch of weird stuff like that. That's not a real hash. I just jamming on my keyboard mm -hmm. the voice chat text if you see something like that do you know what file that is yeah no no it, it makes no sense you don't know if it's an mp3 
you don't know if it's a Solidity file, a JavaScript file, picture, uh, a PDF, you have no clue what it is. So can you send stuff via IPFS and be, you know, breaking laws? Yes. Can you be sending stuff on IPFS and not breaking laws? Yes. Are they going to ever shut down a peer-to-peer network that large? It's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. Um, Because you remember the Pirate Bay. You remember the story. Yep, yep, yep. It was more difficult to shut those down, right? Right. Obviously, we're now at Bitcoin. We're at Ethereum, EVM clone chains, um, EVM superior chains like Phantom. Like, I, I hate to say it, but I always got to drop Phantom separately than other EVM chains. I don't know why. It's just, wow, when mm-hmm. it comes down to the power of this thing. Um, I wasn't sold until I started developing on Phantom. Really? Uh, to be honest. Uh, how many chains have you done development on? I have done development on Ethereum, Binance, Phantom, um, that also means I can do any of the other EVMs. I started doing a little bit in Solana, not much. Um, it's a real pain in the ass, excuse my language, to program in Rust. Mm. It, imagine C++, which that's probably French to you. But imagine an old school language like Latin, and they modernize it by changing like the E's to I's. Uh. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why did we do this? So when it comes to, I want to get back to the IPFS. Uh, okay. So I guess the idea is it, it's stored on like a centralized cloud. No, it's actually stored on a decentralized cloud. Okay. Servers like myself. Right. Are all connected to each other. Right. So Pinata, <laughs> I connect to. Pinata connects to me. So is this what like a uh, uh, I'm trying to think is it Filecoin or some shit? I know there's a lot of these. Filecoin. It's like so these many projects that are out there. But it, yeah, there is this like decentralized cloud thing. That is that where? Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, I would call it that. It, it's really. It, it's. Oh, God. It's a peer-to-peer network, right? So it can be anything and, and everything in that peer-to-peer network. That's BitTorrent. That's blockchain. That's IPFS. Um, those are really interesting because they're hard to kill because the way it is, is it's a spider web connected to spider webs. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah, because I guess I just I don't. I the big reason I got into crypto and stuff. A lot of it is the the, the censorship resistant aspect. Um, oh man, thank you. Do you know that they figured out how to send text messages on chain? Oh, no, I did not know that. During um, Chinese hardships, right? The students within the universities would send zero ether to each other with messages. That's so insane. that is how we quote unquote effectively tag a blockchain. So if you look at some of the developers, you'll see weird things like a zero uh, F the, so it could be zero phantom, it could be zero BNB or it's a zero transfer to somebody else. That's us sending messages to each other on the blockchain. And are you like actually writing a message in the hash? Yeah, yeah we literally write it in there. Right. And it's actually the message dot data that you send. Yeah, Phantom Beamer says in the comments, people sent a bunch of messages to that guy that did the Polygon hack a month ago or so. Send me money and shit yes. like that. Yeah, I did see. I remember seeing all How that. How much was that? 69 million or something like that? Uh, so I thought it was like 690. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. Maybe it was 690. Yeah, it was a crazy one. Next to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Oh, that was back... insane, too. You know how he did it? No. He um, fired up a node, right? 
and anybody can do this. You can download Linux, you can do it in Windows, right? And you make a copy of the blockchain, right? So he made a copy of the blockchain, a copy of the deployed Oracle contract, and he kept sending transactions to it until he got the first four bytes to say yes. When the first four bytes said yes, he then figured out what he had to send from a different contract to do the cross chain. So he did a force hack on the Oracle contract receiving and the Oracle contract sending. This guy spent some time doing it. Mm. So it wasn't intentional. He he found the exploit. There was literally something simple written in that code of the message would trigger an only owner function. Nuts, huh? Yeah, so like we this is where you you terrify the fuck out of me. Cause we, oh, I'm sorry. I'm it really comes. Yeah, I know, I know, hey. Because uh, it really comes <laughs> well, down there's to good developers and there's bad developers. Yeah, and I was really about to ask that. How how big is this war that is going on behind the scenes between your your white hats and and your black hats? Uh, like, um, if if you could take a guess at like a number ratio percentage wise, are we like sixty percent black hats? And we got 40% white hats kind of battling the it out. The part is, is you wouldn't know the percentages if they were doing their numbers, right? Right. Um, good example. Take anonymous, right? Um, the coolest part about being an anonymous is you're anonymous. You can do whatever you want. You can target whatever you want. And it's not about fun. It's about what's right so there's some morality code even in the black hats and the white hats you got the gray hats that have been all over the place um, you got corporate hacking you got non-corporate hacking you got government hacking if you want to jump down this rabbit hole man there are so many hackers that have access to your, your data yeah that you would call the dark web i would call it a bulletin board um it's scary how much of your information is already out there mm-hmm. just on a corporate site that any of these guys can trigger in five seconds because there's exploits for government loopholes here or, or this organization's loopholes there. Um, it's sad, but it's true, but that's the world we live in. Mm-hmm. Everything you do is categorized and digitalized and then analyzed. Mm-hmm. So eat that Whopper with cheese. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I keep forgetting I don't have my camera on. I almost... That's <laughs> I okay. I actually should have up. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's the thing that really should scare people of, you know, why are you training liberty for convenience? Mm-hmm. You know, accepting that cookie on the website, what does that do to you? Why do you accept that? Is it because of the convenience? Um, Facebook, I remember when you had to have a .edu, and I remember you had to have a .edu of a Massachusetts university. I mean, that's how old school I am. That site wasn't that popular back then. We were all making fun of them. (laughs) Obviously, Napster, that was really popular. But, I mean, you're going to have white circles, you're going to have dark circles, you're going to have the 95% that don't care. I mean, it's just like war. Mm. It's not like the entire country picks up pitchforks and torches and goes after you. Yeah. You're literally fighting up to 5% of a pot. Yeah. So, yeah. Like I said, there's good and there's bad. So, Um, I guess it's like a constant battle. Like, when you're you're writing up your code, um, like, you basically go into this (laughs) with the idea of, like, there's some motherfucker out there that's going to be attempting to break it yep. to break it um and that's the part that scares the shit out of you hmm. when you first start um not gonna lie i was more worried about vulnerabilities and once i learned how to close those loops uh use already audited code make slight modifications on already audited code so it doesn't break the audit that's when I learned how to 
really supercharged ERC seven. So I would like I would like to get into this audit stuff because um, yeah, this I think this is an interesting conversation because the space is so new. Um, I noticed in my beginning of my shitcoin trading days, uh, like I was grabbing some fucking retarded stuff, like things with market caps yeah, of. I was buying it. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I bought a squirt. I bought a Squirtle token at one point. That literally the market cap was like five grand. Um, now, <laughs> yeah, you take off, you got all your money back and a limb. Like, I know the mindset. I get it. Yeah. So, but as I'm trying to find these little tokens, uh, you notice like, okay, there's a new way to market things. Uh, we got a Certic audit. Um, we got an audit by by this company. Ashex. Now, <laughs> yeah. Now, for me, when I'm buying this shit, I don't know anything about those audit companies. I know fuck all, and I know that there's no regulations for or against those audit companies. So, like, when we're buying stuff, is, is there an aspect to like we basically need a guy like you as our friend? Um, you know, I'm not going to lie. I've had people go, hey, can you look at this code? Tell me if there's any flaws. And I will sit back and I will start laughing. And they go, well, why are you laughing? And I go, this is the problem. This is why you shouldn't get into this. And this is why you need to sit back and think about, you know, doing what you got to do before you jump into the pool. Mm-hmm. And funny thing is, here is a cash text. So, anybody that's in the voice chat, this is oh, here we go. There's <coughs> yeah. Because I just I know that every fucking project was like, oh, we got an audit, we got an audit. Okay, but... Tiki Finance, right? <clears throat> Remember this? Yes. It was one of the first that had a dividend tracker token, right? Remember that ERC-20 that you couldn't trade? That everybody was like, what the hell is this? Right. Um, I saw the DeFi question. Don't worry, I will get to that. I just want to explain something to this PDF here that you're about to see. If you click on that. Yep. If it still exists, they kill it. They may kill it. But yeah, I didn't put all my plugins in Firefox. My bad, guys. <laughs> but um, when you're looking at this, right, you'll see security assessment, right? Yep. And you scroll through it, right, and you'll see findings global. Implementation of 60 minutes auto payment. DPT, DPT, TTT. Minor typo. Missing emit events. Okay, here's the thing want logs on my contract if i want logs i'm going to make events and then i'm going to make an emit um if you look at the contracts that i put in there for erc 2981 you'll actually see what an event looks like because it's up to, towards the top and then you'll see function some word brackets you know public private internal external only dev you know whatever right you'll see a bunch of modifying words curly brackets a bunch of weird Greek, and then you'll see um, emit whatever the event name is, and then whatever variables are assigned to it. All that is is the logging function. So if you want to check logs, that's how you do it. Mm. Um, You'll see issues with this has problems with this, this has problems with that. Coding style, coding style, coding style. If you don't make stuff readable, like I haven't made those contracts readable. They're, they're readable to me. That's fine for me. That'll gig you on one of these things. Uh, if you see really bad commenting, like this breaks F in the token. I hate when this happens. If you put that into the comments... You're probably going to get kicked on an audit. 
because I've done auditing for other people. Um, eh, you know, we're all a little bit picky when it comes down to coding. Mm -hmm. Now, here we go. What do you think about all these DeFi protocols with the crazy annual percentage yield? What I'm going to tell you is look at the project. Who's running the project? And another question is, how long does the project go? Because if you see these staking pools, if you see these farming pools, they have an end date. Mm. If this thing is ending in nine months and your percentages are like 500, 600%, you know you got a one divided by X type of curve. Hop on it. If this thing's ending in three weeks and the APR is 600%, yeah, there's probably a reason why. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Nobody's yeah. in the pool. Yeah. So when you sit back and look at the protocols, look at what you're doing, look at what you want, look at what your end state goals are. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to do your trading. What I want you to do is do a little research, think about what your end states are, especially when it comes down to trading. And the only reason why I say this is I trade off. Like, I don't care, man. I love it when Tesla hits the tank. Because once it gets out of that track, I'm like, okay, let me go buy some puts and mm. let me short the stock. Mm. And it's great, you know? Instead of eating at Sizzler, baby, I'm going to Applebee's, right? <laughs> but yeah. that's not everybody's mindset because everybody wants to, you know, hey, everything increases. Right now, we're in a weird time with inflation. So, I kind of went out of trading secured equities. And I use the word secured frugally because it's literally ones and zeros on somebody else's computer. Yeah. And so, it is technically a blockchain by definition. Um, but heavily, heavily permissioned. Um, to blockchain where it's just wild west i love this wild west <laughs> yeah it, man these protocols like ohm divided by time yeah max i gotta go take a piss quick i'll be right back if you want to finish that question off for uh for mz that'd be awesome thanks bro ohm divided by time that sounds like an electrical issue divided by time yeah i i, I get it i know it's probably like some kind of uh, weird protocol thing. Olympus. Oh, okay. I haven't looked into Olympus. They look interesting. Um, I just seen some things where they're going to the top four Texas. Kind of irritated that they didn't talk and reach out to Shiba Phantom that has literally been slaying it in the markets recently. Um, sorry, I, I like a good underdog story, you know. Especially when you see him go from 1 million TBL to 2 million TBL. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not familiar with Olympus. And oh, yeah, here we go. She just made me a lot of money this week, killing it. And yeah, <laughs> he has. Um, actually, speaking of automated market makers, has anybody been following Nipple Labs? Yeah, do you want to get into Nipple Labs quick? Okay, so I know Fred has. Oh, good, he has a tidbit. Awesome. We love the tidbits. Pretty soon that Halloween tidbit will be usable if we can get RPC. Oh yeah. Tools to work properly. Yeah, I think you're still muted. Yeah, we love the tidbits. Um, yeah, let's get into Nipple Labs a little bit then, I guess. Yeah. Did you not notice that the TVL went from like 44K to like 105? Nope. Yeah, so That's a double up. I, I know it's gone up, but um, I figured since I'm becoming the senior developer, actually, no, take that back. It's 624. I've been the senior developer for 18 hours and 24 minutes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, as the senior developer over there, um, one of my things to instill confidence is I'm going to throw my money on the line too. Um, so I threw, I guess, you know, I would call it jump in the pool, make a big splash type contribution. Mainly because if I'm working on the project, that means I believe in the project. Yep. Um, some fun things that are coming there. 
well, we're going to go and we are going to make an NFT marketplace. We are going to, obviously, if you've seen what I did with ERC 721s, oh, I seen the fist pump. I seen the fist pump. Yes. That's what I like to hear. Um, gas fees for exchanging. Have you seen how insane they are between like noon and four? Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice if I would be able to reduce that by 50%? Mm hmm. Very. Okay. Put two and two together. If I did that with ERC 721s, what do you think I'm doing right now with automated market? Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. <clears throat> Ooh. Um, not only you, that. Um, you gonna win, I, you going to win some money from Harry or soon or what? I don't care if he ever notices me walking down the street. <laughs> um, I'm not doing it for notary or rarity. I'm doing it for you guys. Love um, it. Well, okay, yeah. Do I make a little bit of cash? Absolutely. Oh, of course. But I would rather make cash while you guys are saving cash by not getting jit. You know, an arm and a leg on gas costs. Yep. Um, just today, exchanging out um, a few swapping for liquidity in and out. So I just wanted to see what it looked like. 1.2 Phantom. Wow. Now imagine that when Phantom's 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks. Do you want to spend 450 bucks doing that? Yeah. Probably not, right? No. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm working it. Um, I'm probably going to upgrade the V2 contracts, mainly because the V3. It's good in principle. It just sucks in deployment. So I'm gonna actually roll back to a V2, optimize the V2, and see if I can add more functionality and create a V4 contract off the V. So, Goddamn! I'm looking see. at yeah. I see Nips mark, market cap right now is 405,000. Uh, I don't see a total. Yeah, I don't know where to see total. total value value. Yeah, I don't know where to fucking get that stat. My token trading days are, are long behind me. Today, yeah. today was the first. I, I bought some spell today because my Jeep broke down. So I fucking had to sell a bit human, got some fanties, and then went, mm, I'm, it looks like spell's going to run a little bit. I'll put some in spell. Oh, we're at 109K lot. Wow. 109,000 lot right now. Um, when I did my jump, we were at about 45, 48, somewhere in that zone. I threw a ton in there, and the only reason why, if I'm taking senior developer role, we're going to change some stuff. If people want to see improvements, we're going to make some improvements. Uh, like I was saying a little bit earlier, my dev buddy that works with me in GNM Squared Labs, we're talking about creating an ETF that you're going to be able to trade there, maybe some some sexy charting is going to be coming out. So instead of just looking at farms, you'll be able to plug and go, okay, I'm using this router, pin this. Okay, this is where I'm going. This is where I'm selling. This is where I'm buying. This is where I'm selling. I want to create something that you can go to nipple of that, right? Right. Go use the Nipex B2 and just completely destroy the competition like I want a user experience where you just go damn that's awesome and then the best part is I want to make sure others know about it and others can do it Yeah. so that way yeah it may be the same set of contracts but here connect to ours use it um, another thing you're going to love this what's that magic thing it, where you can take an NFT from one chain to another mm. Mm, the chain, right? Yep. Yeah, this whole yeah. bridge thing that's happening. Yeah, probably about 24 chains. Wow. I figured, why not, man? If we can start rescuing projects, let's start doing it. Um, <clears throat> if we can bring them in the Phantom, let's do it. Um, wow. New to the project, how long will it interact with Nibble Finance or just the OG tidbits? Actually, that's a good question. Um, I haven't gotten to that stage of the development chats with Golden. We are working on 
the basics right now. That is, update the contracts, optimize the contracts, whatever I got to do to break them apart, to make them work a little bit faster, a little bit cleaner. We'll go from there. Um, the whole end state goal is I want to make sure that you guys aren't paying one phantom per trade during heat power. Yep. And we're talking Y values of like 350, 400. I want you to be paying like sub one phantom. Well, it's, it's, a, it's yeah. not that big of a deal, but you know. It's going to be. Later, yeah, 100%. It will be. 100%. Um, so, well, Max, man, I, I fucking appreciate the hell out of this. We got to do a few more of these. Um, yeah, and that, that's the thing, man. I feel like we I just scratched the surface a little bit. My, my wild craziness. It goes in the back of my head, and I don't care. Like it, it's fine by me. Mm. You know, I can tell you the best part of an NFT project is it's ninety nine percent planning, one percent production. Right. And everybody wants to focus ninety nine percent production, one yep. percent plan. Yeah, a hundred percent. You're a hundred percent right. I, I I just I get reached out by projects who like, yeah, are kind of getting the art done and like they're ready. To, essentially trying to launch in a week um and it's just like an artist got the art done but there's no yeah there's no real plan to it all um yeah i'm glad you said that well you know and here's the thing right i've had a project leader sit back and go well i got the art done and then no i'm changing it i got the art done no i'm changing it i got the art done Hmm. no i'm changing it and I get it if it's one of those premier projects. Mm. Like, I'm talking premier projects, right? One of the guys in this chat is one of my top projects. One of the guys in this chat that's talking is actually working with me on an Ethereum bridge right now to bring his project from Ethereum down here to Phantom. <laughs> then the Phantom contract takes over to the minting. We end up doing another contract over there because he wants to do a name change on the contract. That's the easiest mm. way to doing it. And he wants the lowest gas fees possible. So it's a contract upgrade, name upgrade, everything. Do we get a, a oh, it was a name upgrade. I was about to say, do we get a hint at what project might be coming over here? But Well, he's working the name, so I won't... All right. Uh, all right. But his second project with us is Mega Friends. And Aha. To, be you, to be honest with you, man, I love political jokes. Right? Yep. I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican. Yep. I make fun of everybody. Equally, yep. right? it, it's all good. And, well, I've had my eyes on the Mega Friends. Oh, man. Have you seen some of the responses? Funny as shit. No, I haven't. Dude, I, okay. I think it's because it's on Dev Chats, right? <laughs> I get screenshots on a daily basis, right? Because um, they, they have friends that, you know, direct message people on Twitter and Facebook and everything else, right? And <laughs> sure is what the butt that says, oh my God, please fuck your face. <laughs> and the PR guy said, thank you. <laughs> it literally dropped my phone and I spit out beer. <laughs> I was in a public place drinking beer, spit beer out. Everybody looks at me and I go, oh, you guys got to see this. It's that type of advertisement that I find hilarious. Yeah, right? that's fucking awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's just me. And that's because my maturity level never got, you know, past the age of 30. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, some of us are like that. I don't yep. take life seriously. I joke around a lot. Um, another project that's coming out here shortly is Phantom Zombies. And that is a phantom foundation project. So don't be shocked if you see me tweeting about those. Um, am I supposed to get behind them or am I supposed to fight them again? I don't know, man. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. It's a free country, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm never going to. I'm never going to tell you what to do, man. You're your own person. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a libertarian, man. I, I don't yeah, there you go. In justice. Um, I believe in justice for all. Freedom Love it. for all. Love it. Know? Love it. Uh, that's why I'm in this space, man. That's literally why I'm in this space. Oh, I mean, yeah, I think the most interesting I, aspect I, of all this is like the DAO stuff. Governance. Love it. Oh, dude. 
you know, the Dow stuff and let's say an art collection, right? I find some principles of this amazing, and I find some principles of why are you doing a Dow, right? And I, I always ask this question, why are you doing a Dow? Well, it's because everybody else is doing it. And I go, you probably shouldn't do a Dow. Let's do something else. Hmm. Well, why? I go, because if everybody has a Dow, then everybody has a museum, right? When, when I see Dow, and it comes down to the NFT space, I think more museum. You see what I mean? Mm. It's a collection of art. It's something there that you can see. Right. And yes, I understand it's a decentralized authority organization, right? But when it's the NFT space, you're thinking more of a, a gallery. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I can see those galleries, but, you know, as a developer, it's how do I get that gallery out? Because at first it's centralized, but then how do you make it decentralized? How much work are you potentially going to be doing within DAOs? Like, I'm talking like coding, like voting structures and... Uh, voting structures, it's easy. I already got voting contracts. Right. I already developed. Right. Like, that, that stuff's easy. Yeah. Um, it, it, brother... If you look up, read the docs, Solidity, it'll show you a simple voting contract. And yes, I know it looks like Greek to you, mm-hmm. but if you read it, you'll understand it. Maybe the second, third, fourth time, because there's nuances. And it took me about two, three, four times of just getting it. Yeah. Of just looking at Solidity documentation of, oh, okay. So instead of it being in plain English, which would be a strength, it's in hex. Okay, so I gotta convert my stuff into hex. It's too easy. Um, fun stuff, you know. And, and you learn these simple nuances of, you know, hex values are a little bit more important than string values. Right. And I can program a string to respond to a certain hex, so I can display it on a web page. You know, it, it's the certain small nuances that you learn programming that you can display whatever type of data you're trying to but yet again I fall into that category of when you got a DAO at first it's super centralized it's you it's the project owner and it's a web page how do you take that DAO and give it to the people when they got to go through your centralized server Mm -hmm. in order to get all the the benefits you see what I mean Yeah. yeah so it's not even a D yet yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. So when I hear the word D app and everybody says D app and I use the word D app to you because you understand what it is. But when I say D app, I'm thinking you grab your phone, you can update it. It's on your laptop. Uh, you can put it on your TV, you can put it on your Xbox, whatever. And you can interact because it's that decentralized. Mm-hmm. It's on yeah. multiple networks. Yeah. Um, oh. and that's the next gen thinking. And that's what you get going to Phantom DC versus this is what I do, this is what I'm comfortable with, all that fun stuff. Right. Well, Max, I really appreciate this, man. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to take too much time. I know you probably got another AMA coming up, and I know you probably need to take a break. We got to kick you out because we got uh, the Flamingo update coming up. Um, oh, hey. I heard they're adding rarities. Is that true? Oh, I think I'm about to get that update. <laughs> Ooh, man. Well, hey, sorry about you, Jeep, but at least you got to have fun today. I did. I did. Uh, I'm, I'm taking it as another sign. Uh, you know, it's funny. We have... So I got a Broadway... I got a gold exchange place in Orangeville. So I've been buying... I'm in this little town of 30,000. Two years ago, I started buying Bitcoin at an ATM that I found in one of our convenience stores. So flash forward two years now, uh, we got a Broadway, uh, it's called Broadway Gold Exchange. You know, silver coins, gold coins, buy and sell. Uh, They just posted on their door, we buy and sell crypto. So I decided to to go in there today and uh, had an awesome conversation. I think I'm actually going to be quitting my nine to five Anyways, (laughs) Anyways, because <laughs> uh, they're super interested in bringing me on. Um, 
Yeah, well, so good for you, man. Yeah. I'm glad you're actually making the jump into the space. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of what I was talking. Like, I, I went in because you know, first thing was like, okay, I need to figure out how to cash out a little bit because I got a jeep to pay for. Um, exactly. So that was the conversation that we were having, and you know, I don't, I don't want to do the shake pay, upload my ID. Like, I'd, I'd rather not. So what they, uh, because of regulations aren't caught up yet, I will have a time frame where. It looks like I'll be able to sell crypto for cash at a three to five percent cost, which I'm fucking totally fine with. Um, but yeah, so I, I mean, and then we got into the conversation of like, hey, I've been in this space for a while, and blah blah blah, and uh, yeah, we have some conversations coming up over the next couple of weeks. But it sounds like within the fucking month, I might be uh, 100% making the jump into the space, no matter what. So, well, I retired from the army. I got off the rig. I, I left EMS, and I, this is my retirement gig. I'm living in Florida, and I enjoy my life. I'm gonna tell you this much, man. Crypto will enhance your life. Yeah, dude, it's funny. It. It's funny because like I literally had a week off. Was it last week? I, w- I had four days off because the Jeep was in the shop. <laughs> I've literally been back to work for two days before this thing broke down again. Um, and it's funny just in that week off where I'm just at home doing the crypto shit. Uh, I get back in on Friday, and and one of these framers, just uh, the supervisor of the framing crew that we, that works for us, uh, he comes in and he just looks at me, and he just looks dead in the eyes and goes, "Dude, you look really good today. Like, just you look healthier today." And I'm like, "God damn, I don't know how I don't know if I wanted to hear that." <laughs> when you were when you and I were going kind of ham on uh, Phantomon, you mm. weren't looking too hot, man. Yeah, you were looking like you were in the dark. Uh, dude, I've been fucking wearing out a wee bit. Uh, so yeah, you know, having that week off was a bit of a refresher. Uh, you know, this weekend was another one. But yeah, we're we're getting ready to we're getting ready to make the jump because clearly my health is uh, involved in this. So, All right, brother. anyways, I will kick myself off. Max. So that we, but yeah, brother, if you want to do this again, just. Damn right. This time, man. Just Damn right, man. Tag me. I don't think. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I'm gonna get a, a, a nice list of questions for you. Good. I'll have a whole like list of <laughs> updates. And fun stuff I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try and smarten myself up a little bit more so it's not so French to me next time. But uh, this is this is a good start. I, I, if you want, we can have the the you know the five seconds of how to code with Max Flow. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> It seems like your next avenue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that way. I don't care. It's not a big deal. Love it. Max, man, appreciate this big time. Thanks again. All right. Later, brother. All right, brother. Take it easy. Well, ladies and gents, that was fucking awesome.